What the heck? Do patents of hers normally, uh, bleed? Yeah, <laughs> cute. Oh, that's unsettling. Some kind of princess dress. A few sizes too small for anyone with organs. The fabric is pra practically tissue paper and feels like the seams would pop if you breathed it in. If you breathed in it. Some sort of medieval butcher costume. The fake blood looks uncomfortably convincing. Just a dusty old theater costume. Ooh, papers. They appear to be play scripts with lots of scribbling in the margins. Some of the papers look torn. A container of props, swords, and umbrellas. They look cheap and easily breakable. Oh, I guess someone didn't like what they saw. Hmm. Oh! Oh, hello! Oh! Um... Gim? Patricia, jump! I need something to close the gap with. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Aha! I knew it. This might come in handy. Yeah. You shift to walk faster. Oh dear. Yeah. Ha ha. Nice. There's a small silver key on the floor labeled room three. I hope whatever's in this darn room is worth all the trouble she put me through. Oh yeah, what's her face? What? <gasps> Bye! Bye! See ya! Hoo-hoo! Ha-ha! Hee-hee! Ho-ho! Ha-ha! No, not... Not today, Satan! Uh, room three. Not today, Pally-poo! Three... Was it this one? Yay! Of course her room has another ghost in it. I should have expected that by now. Come on, come on! Pick up the Dawn phone already! I know you can hear me! What, you don't want to talk to me anymore now that I'm dead too? And she's having a con conniption into the phone. Great. Um, just who the heck are you? Oh, I mean... You need to be moving along, dame. The name's Detective Eda Bab Bainbridge, and this here is a crime scene. And having some civilian messing with the evidence makes it awful hard to solve a murder. You see? So it's best you be on your way. Hmm, right. So I'm guessing from the silly getup you're playing detective. Done straight! And I ain't playing. I'm a bona fide private eye. Really now? Is that why you talk like some kid that reads too many dime store crime novels? Nobody actually talks like that. It's just something silly they do in movies. Well, son of a... I thought my act was pretty convincing. Doesn't matter. Either way. I came here to play a detective and ended up uncovering actual moita. And I'm gonna find out who done it. Ghost or not? Let me guess. The woman that was killed in the screening room, Anna Barton. That's the death you're investigating. Y yeah. How'd you know? Talked to her earlier. Well, her spirit, anyway. She was interesting, to say the least. I used a key to get in here, so it's safe to assume you're looking into how Anna died. Oh, is that so? Huh. You got any leads on the perpetrator, then? Some sort of shadowy monster thing. I didn't get a good look at it. Too busy running away with my delicious thighs. It looked unnatural. Whatever it was, it wasn't human. It didn't happen to be real short, yeah? Close to the ground and skittery? Don't think so. But I think I know what you're talking about. Have you seen it? Yeah! I nearly killed it before it scampered away into the ballroom. Then I came here to further investigate Miss Burton's mysterious demise. Door locked behind me. Lights went out. Next thing I knew, sharp cold steel on my back. Ms. Director must have known I was close to cracking the case. So she had me snuffed out. Huh, that's the first I've heard of her doing her own dirty work. Far as I knew, she just left it to those creatures. Yeah, as if. I was way too tough for those bozos. They barely put a scratch on me. 
You seem to be in pretty, a pretty good mood for someone who's dead. Come on, doll. Just because I'm dead doesn't mean I gotta be all doom and gloom. Won't do me any good anyhow. Well, if you're so pleased as Punch about being backstabbed, why haven't you gone into the light already? Just because I'm in high spirits, no pun intended, doesn't mean I'm ready to head into the light just yet. I'm gonna stick around till I get my revenge. Or at least till I know that crazy broad's gonna get locked up for good. But what can I do? I'm just a ghost. I'm stuck in this darn mansion till I'm put to rest properly. Unless... Unless... If I were to have a partner to help me with this case, then maybe I could rest easy after we either put that bird in the jailhouse or a coffin. I'll think about it. That's probably what Patricia's thinking, but since I'm playing the video game, we'll, we'll help the mysterious little ghost. Fantastic! Though there's one problem I see in our plan. What are you talking about? You can't leave this room. The ghosts who die here are attached to the place they died. Jeez, doll. You really think you're an expert on ghosts now that you've talked to a couple, huh? Maybe I do. Am I wrong? Eh, only partially. Sure, I can't leave as long as my restless spirit is attached to this room. That much you got right. However, spirits can attach themselves to people or objects they find interesting, too. You're not implying you should possess me in order to leave, are you? No, no. That ain't right at all. I ain't, I ain't the kind of poltergeist to go around possessing pretty dames without taking them out to dinner first. I was more thinking of getting attached to something you got with you. If I were to latch on to something that you got on your person, then I'd be able to go just about anywhere, as long as you aren't too far. Latch on to something like... Like maybe a rather lovely pair of... Uh... Earrings, or something. I don't know. Well, if you want me to come with, then you're gonna have to let me get attached somehow. I mean, I could always just haunt you yourself, though I ain't quite sure how that'd work. I mean, I know ghosts could do that, but I don't know if it's more permanent than haunting some jewelry or nightstand, you know? And even if I w Fine, fine. You can haunt my earrings or whatever you think you need to do to follow me around. I don't have all night to sit here and discuss the limitations of being a semi-corporeal entity. Right! Let's get a move on then. We're wasting moonlight! Ida Bainbridge is now haunting you. <laughs> what do you say your name was again? Patricia. Alright, Patty. Before we head out, you got any other burning questions for me? How did she know about the murder? From what I can tell, the director's pretty good at not leaving tracks. How did you know about the murder of Miss Barton? Psh, that one's easy. You see, I arrived a couple hours early to my audition. Miss Director seemed a little hesitant to let me in, but I brushed it off as her being nervous. She was showing me around when we were going by the screening room. She told me it was undergoing maintenance and we shouldn't go in. However, I, being my investigative self, couldn't resist taking a little peek through the door. The screening room was a dang mess. Blood and black ooze all over the carpet, along with whatever was left of, Miss, left of Miss Barton. The director pretended to freak out and not know what happened, but her acting is as bad as her writing. She hurried off to supposedly go call the cops. After that, she sicked one of her creatures on me to get rid of the only witness. I already told you to rest. Anything else? Can't say I have. Haven't had the time to go around introducing myself to the local specters, you know? Only other ghost I've seen around hasn't been exactly the talkative type. Tall, wears a ratty sweater vest, likes to disappear a lot. Ooh. Face cleaned through the wall and floated through the other room without so much as a how do you do? Some people these days, I swear. Anything else? Are there other monsters that I should know about? Because I think I've seen like three or four at this point. My guess is as good as yours, doll. But knowing the lady behind the strings, I wouldn't put it past her to have some spare monsters lying around. Anything else? That's all. Alrighty, let's get a move on. We need to search this place top to bottom. Can't see a thing. Is the fog really that thick? Actually, it's just drywall. The window's fake. Oh. Ugh. 
good luck with your new ghostly gumshoe. You've got a lot of ground to cover. Would you like me to save your progress? Why, yes. Please do. Oh, I see how it is. Phone girl's too good to talk to ghost. Jerk. Can't sleep now. Couldn't sleep even if I wanted to. It's hot as a rock. Nothing of interest in the closet. Not a skeleton in sight. Looks like she was trying to rewrite parts of the script. She's not half bad. Her penmanship is a lacking though. Another script. Must have been Anna's. Ugh. Not even past the first page and it looks awful. How does the director manage to make scripts this bad? It's almost impressive. She manages to make the most unbearable crap to read. Find something of value my behind. Nothing but old clothes and junk in here. Seriously? You're robbing the dead right in front of me? For shame. Oh, hush. She told me it was fine. Hmm. The door's still locked. Let me take a look at it. Ida phased her hand through the locked door, fiddling with the handle from the other side. Oh, yeah. And voila! Ooh. Hmm. Huh. Pretty ghost. Every ghost is pretty. Not to be rude, but what the heck's a girl like you doing here? I could ask you the same thing. I asked first. I should give her more of an accent. She's in here playing pool. And seeing you as you're still breathing. You're the one who's someplace she shouldn't be. Fair point. I'm just trying to find my way out of here. What about you? Yeah, good luck with that. I'm just trying to keep from going stir-crazy, being cooped up here like this. At least the director has good taste in amenities. Here for a game? Sorry, I don't play billiards. I was wondering if I could ask you a few things. I guess... I haven't seen another soul around here, so I guess I could use the conversation. Daisy Thornton. I work in... business. You? Patricia Dahl. Charmed, truly. Now, you sure you're not up for a game? Could have a little wager, if that'll make the offer more attractive. Really, it's fine. Your loss. How did you get here? You don't seem like an actor. You work in... business. You really want to know why I came here? No, I just felt like asking to waste both our time. No need to get short. I was just making sure. I work in a family... business. I make offers to people on behalf of my organization, sort out contracts, that sort of thing. I was discussing a budget with Josephine for her next film, and I thought everything had been going fine. Huh, interesting. Who do you work for, exactly? The mob. I thought they sent me to cut a deal with Josephine, but I guess they'd had other plans sorted out. Uh, can we change the subject? Oh, sure, sure, I get it. Don't need me saying too much and making you a target. I won't tell you what family I'm with for your own safety. But I will let you in on a little secret. And what's that? The deal was gonna be that she'd bump off a few choice players for us and get to keep the snuff reels. We'd pay the cost of her getting what she needed. We'd split the bud money. Blood money. The bud money. The blood money. At least... That's what the plan was before she went and took me out instead. Real shame, too. I thought we'd really be getting along before then. How unfortunate. You're telling me. How did you die? Aren't you supposed to avoid those sorts of questions when talking with dead people? Only if they get angry about it. Fair, I guess. I was out in the courtyard, taking a tour around the mansion before we got down to business. We'd been talking here and there, and I may have a few inappropriate comments slipped. But she didn't seem to really care. So I'm standing there, admiring the fountain, when out of nowhere her and a couple of goons come up behind me and dunk my head into the water. I'm pretty good at playing dead, so I thought perhaps if I just held my breath long enough and waited it out, I could escape. And you can see for yourself how well that worked out. 
Still don't see why they went to the trouble of setting me up like this. Why not just give me some men's shoes or a long walk off a short pier? Or just shoot me for God's sakes. Men can be so overly complicated at times, I swear. Anyway, was there anything else you needed? Eh, suit yourself. I couldn't help but mention you didn't really say any reason you're stuck here. Eh? You want to move on, don't you? Into that light and all that? What's keeping you here? Oh, that's easy. I like it here. No point in crossing over for me. Plus, since you went and got the door for me, I'm, I'm not stuck in this room anymore. So I can go just about anywhere. T thanks for that, by the way. What? I'll admit, it can be a bit of a drag. But the trade-off does have some perks. Don't have to eat, having a physical form is optional, and I haven't needed a cigarette since I died. And once I get out of this place, I'm gonna wreak havoc on my ex-boyfriend. No doubt the bastard is the one who planned all this. He never did get over with when I left him for his boss. I told him it was just business. Business. But you know how mobsters can be. But once I get back to the city, they won't know what hit him. Ah, uh, okay. Lovely chatting with you. I'll be on my way now. I should get moving too, since you won't play with me. I'm afraid there's nothing left for me here. Be seeing you around, Patricia. Why do I have a feeling she might be trouble? Some books of poetry, it looks like. A little bit of Poe, a little bit of Sappho. She has some good taste. Plenty of old novels to pick from, all fiction. Just a bunch of pool cues hang up on the wall. Oh, save point. Let me update your file. Another piano. Must have been hard getting it to the second floor. Ada, you play piano? Just a little. Guess I could give it a go. Just a little. Maybe I was being a little modest. <laughs> Alright, enough messing around. Back to snooping. Uh, do we want to go, go in there? Yeah, I'm not opening that up. Something tells me we don't want to see what's on the other side. Yeah. Let me take a look at it. Ida faced her hand through the locked door, fiddling with the handle from the other side. Nice. Way to go, Ida. Wonderful. Ooh, cute. Bun buns. Positively adorable. I don't know, doll. Don't you think their eyes are kind of creepy? Look like they're always watching? I'll get over it. <laughs> Ooh, old timey radio. The radio's tuned to static. It's barely big enough for a child. Another vanity. I should probably fix my makeup real quick. If she is getting all this on film, I'd hate to look like a wreck in most of it. Come on now, Patty. I know you want to kiss your reflection, but we gotta get a move on. Zip it, Sherlock. I have to be beautiful. A little table set up for a tea party. Oh, he's so cute. Is there a baby in here? Is there a child somewhere? Let's see what's in here. Someone's diary. It seems there's only a few entries, with most of the other pages being torn out of blank. Dear Diary, I'm starting to think I should have take I should have taken my parents' offer to send me to boarding school instead of going to live with my uncle. He's no fun at all, and only tried to homeschool me for a week before he gave up. Now I'm not allowed downstairs unsupervised, and he locks me in my room whenever he's away. All I have for company is you, Diary dearest. When mother and father return from their touring of Europe, I'll have them buy this old mansion and kick out my worthless uncle. Such a manner deserves better than the cad as the, than that cad as the caretaker. They'd actually employ some staff and run this place properly. I found a spare library key today, and I hid it somewhere Uncle can never find it. He forbade me from going in there, saying the books from my grandmother's old collection would fill my head with. <sighs> <sighs> 
nonsense. Of course, he can't stop me while he's away during the day and forgets to lock the door. I found a set of keys in the previous maid's quarters and hid them about, so even if he finds one key, I won't lose them all. Smart. The books in the library are quite interesting. All sorts of tales of necromantic... What? Oh dear, necromancy? And of ghostly encounters. Some of the tomes even have detailed instructions on contacting the dead and even resurrection. Oh, that's not good. Though I don't really have the supplies to experiment with either just yet. Oh dear. I've grown so sick of this place and my uncle's nonsense. He's more of a jailer than a guardian, and my room is my plush prison. I still don't have all the keys to the mansion. I still lack the keys to his personal quarters, the basement, or the kitchen. But I found a spirit board in the maid's old room the other day. I've started talking to my late grandmother. Oh, just <laughs> casually. So anyway, I was talking to my grandmother, who's a ghost. She's very kind. She warned me not to go to the basement, saying there's things down there far too dangerous for a young girl. I've started reading books on lockpicking. Ugh. Though I've not had any success yet, at least the spare keys I found are still good. Uncle is still none the wiser about my es escapades while he's away. If I manage to learn to lockpick, perhaps I'll investigate what's happening in the basement. Grandmother's warnings only have made me more curious. Oh dear. I guess we're going to the basement. Uh, I looked at everything in here. Hmm, so somebody's been messing with necromancy, and I wonder if it's Miss Violante. Hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Are the flowers in this painting always that dead? No. What? Spooky. <sighs> okay. Oh. Oh dear. What the heck? Do paintings of hers normally, uh, bleed? Honestly, it just might be an imp it might just be an improvement. Yeah, the brush strokes in this one are not ni a lot nicer. Oh dear. Somebody. Oh. Oh dear. Oh dear, there's broken glass everywhere. Oh no. Uh, spooky. Um. Well, was there anything else in the nope? In the nope basement. Patty cake. That lock looks like some some heavy duty stuff, Patty Cake. I think we're gonna need to find a key if we want to get in there. Uh. Yeah. Well, we still have an empty wine bottle, so we can bash something over the head if we need to. Storage. I don't think we need anything in there. Did I go in here? Oh yeah, courtyard. There you are. Returning to the scene of the crime, I see. Oh, mm, fancy meeting you here. And who's that sourpuss you've been dragging around? Mm. What are you giving that look for? Come on, Patty. We should just go. We got more important stuff to do. Well, well, I'll be. I thought I knew that mug, but that voice just confirmed it. Almost didn't recognize you in that dumb getup. How have you been, Ada? It's been a while, hadn't it? Mmm. Aw, you're not happy to see me. Don't tell me you're still mad. Mmm. The silent treatment? Come on, Ada B. You know that doesn't work on me. Don't call me that, you creep. Why don't you just take a hike and leave me alone? You know you miss me, Ada B. Aw. Why don't we just go back to how things were before? I'm not coming back to you, and I'm never gonna forgive you. Capiche? Playing tough as usual. Wonder, really, I wonder how you managed to not get tired of pretending. Doesn't matter anyway, I have better things to do. Oh, and nice seeing you again, Patty. My offer for that game still stands. We'll be seeing you, Daisy. 
<laughs> Eater B. <laughs> yeah, what a dumb nickname. Anyway, we should really get moving. We still got a murder, murder to catch. Oh, move over, patty cake. This looks like my expertise. And there we go. Oh dear. Ooh, something shiny. I should go directly towards it. What you find? A lockpick, I think. A bit of an odd thing to hide in the flower pot. That should come in handy. Patricia takes the lockpick from the vase. Thank you, Patricia. A bunch of dusty old books. They look like they haven't been touched in years. I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling all of a sudden. I'm sure it's nothing. Yes. Oh. Can we use the matches? Hey, look, Patty, this one's got your name on it. Haha, <laughs> would you look at that? Yikes. These writers sure aren't happy with you, Patty Cake. Heartless hot, heartless harlot, gold digger? What'd you do to get on the bad side? I'd rather not talk about it. Aw. Hmm. Hmm. Alright. What did you mean you have a bad feeling? What the? Oh dear. Did the door lock behind us? Maybe it's a one way door. Yeah, let me get that door for you. Whew. Creepy. Uh, what? I recognize that noise. Me too. Come on, if we hide quick enough, maybe it won't find us. Hide where? Hide where? In the fireplace? Why is the ghost hiding? You don't think it knows we're in here, right? I mean, it didn't see us or nothing. It'll probably walk on by. Or not. Ida, do you really think this was a good idea? Of course I do. I hide in spots are flawless. Why are you hiding? As you were saying, it it should have just walked on by. No way it could have hurt us. Probably only knows we're in here is because you don't know when to shut your mouth. Excuse me? Ladies, ladies, please. What do we do now? Oh, um, okay, I got an idea. When it comes in, I'll distract it and you bash it over the head with something. Ida, there's no way out. Holy crap, this one's bigger than I thought. I got this bottle. Smash with the bottle! Oh, he had a little top hat. Nice going. Is it dead? I hope so with how hard you bash that sucker. Wham! Right in the back of the skull. I still don't want to hang around too long, you know. On the off chance it's still alive. Take his hat. Take his cute little hat. Fair enough. Let's get going. We got bigger fish to fry anyhow. All right, back to snooping. Hey, what's what's the deal with? I don't know if this will be sharp enough, but it doesn't hurt to try. Oh yeah. Patricia uses the broken glass to cut the door free of the edges. It's still covered in hideous wallpaper, but at least it's open now. Oh. And done. <laughs> wow. I think I finally found the perfect look for me with my new, uh, complexion. Well, now what? Pretty ghost. Huh. <sighs> if only I had someone else to do makeup on, or at least someone to talk to. I think I'm starting to go stir crazy in hearing things. Maybe we could help. My friend here is quite the conversationalist. Aw, thanks, Patty Cake. I don't think she could keep her mouth shut if she tried. Thanks. Patty cake. Huh? How long have you two been standing there? And how'd you get in here anyway? We found the door beneath the wallpaper. Looks like someone didn't want anyone find in this room for some reason. Oh, that explained why Miss Violante never came back like she said she would. But why hide the door like that? No, I wonder I haven't. No wonder I haven't seen anyone else all this time. Oh, where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself yet. My name's Lacey. Pleased to meet you. I'm Patricia. 
and I'm Detective Bainbridge, Private Eye, here to investigate the mysterious disappearances connected with this here manor. Is the entire introduction really necessary? Oh, my, you, you're perfect. Oh, I am? Of course, you're the perfect subject for a makeover. Your hair is a disaster, and even by ghost engines, your complexion is horrific. You'd be such fun, such a fun project. You, uh, really know how to make a girl feel special, don't you? Sorry, just, you have to let me style you, please. I'll leave you alone after that, I swear. I just, if I can make you look presentable, then I'll know what all that time in beauty school was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying, but... Patty, help me out here. Come on, Nita, let her doll you up. Either you will be pretty. Come on, Patty, you're really gonna take her side. You will be cute. Arr. Come on, Nita, can't you just grin and bear it for a little while? Just to help her move on. Ugh, I mean, fine, I guess I'll take it. Really? Perfect. Come here and sit. Let's get started. Cute. Hold still. I can't brush your hair out if you keep moving. Oh, that's what you're doing. I thought you were trying to scalp me. It only feels like that because you won't sit still. Patricia, I may need you to hold her down if she doesn't if she doesn't cut it out. I suppose I could lend a hand once I get the makeup. You know what? I ain't that bad after all. This is fine. No need to do anything drastic. That's good to hear. Oh, and did you need something, Patricia? I just wanted to ask you something real quick. Oh, of course. Ask away. Tell me about yourself. Gladly. My name's Lacey Gardner. Makeup artist for the stars. Were you in the industry long? About three years now. Though I did some small theater productions while I was still in beauty school, so technically longer, I suppose. I actually used to paint for a living. Paint. Uh, yeah, she used to paint the living. I actually used to paint for a living before that. But uh, that starving artist stereotype is no joke. But really, it wasn't that big a jump from that to what I do now. It's just painting on a person instead of a canvas. Though it's exciting being on productions where they're breaking out the special effects for monsters and things. I mean, I'm fine just sticking with my rouge and lip stain, but nothing beats getting to really get into making the prosthetics blend with the face or getting to paint up a cute clown look. Though sometimes I'd get bumped from working on the monster paint to do the lady's makeup again. They told me I took too many artistic liberties and needed to remember to stick to the color palette. I was just trying to think of how it would look on camera instead of trying to make it look accurate. I mean, it'll be black and white anyway, right? Yeah, some people can't really handle something more than... No some, <laughs> some people really just can't handle someone being more knowledgeable than them. You're preaching to the choir. Any idea where I can find this stuff? Oh, wait, am I supposed to be doing something? Oh, I know, I saw some really expensive brands in that backstage area in the ballroom. Oh, crap, I'm supposed to be going all the way back there? Those would work fantastic. Uh, that's not exactly an opinion option right now. Oh, well, that's a shame. I was really hoping to get my mitts on some of those. I'm sure there's some in a bathroom or something around here. Hmm, she does need a lot of work. Something bold would suit her, I think. And a thicker foundation ought to help with how awful her skin is. And if that doesn't work, a bright lipstick and a flattering eyeshadow will help draw the eye away from that. Like heck, I'm letting you put that spackle you call makeup on my face. Did you say something, detective? Just can't wait to see what you're doing on my face. Me too. Alright. Alright. Alright, guess I'm going. This foundation looks pretty light, and one of these lipsticks is fairly natural. I'm sure Ida would appreciate the subtle look, though I'm not sure her stylist would care for it. 
Eh. Took the dull looking makeup. How's this? Will this be okay? Oh, these are much duller than I wanted, but if it's all you could find... No, wait. You know what? This is more of a challenge. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. That's the spirit. Well, guess it's finally time. <laughs> God help me. Lacey excitedly took the makeup Patricia brought and starts her, fa her work on Ida's face. <clears throat> Ida is trying hard to sit still and being a good sport, but she's grimacing. Uh, can you stop making faces? I know I wanted a challenge, but you're just being difficult. As she, wor As she works, she chatters about some celebrity gossip she remembered. Ida zones out immediately, while Patty tries to humor her. It feels like forever as Lacey continues to fiddle with Ida's makeup, seeming to get frustrated at the limited color palette at she has at her disposal. Well, sorry. Just sharpen this line up, some blending here, and with that... Oh. Voila, pretty as a picture. Um, it's good? How'd she take that long? How'd she take that long and I still look the same? Oh. Eh. Doesn't your skin look much smoother? And I feel like the subtle eye look really makes your eyes pop while still looking natural. Er, yeah, what you said, doll. Just when I thought she couldn't get cuter? You really outdid yourself. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a teeny bit of makeup there. But yeah, I think that looks much better. I know, right? I still got it. <clears throat> well, a deal is a deal. I guess I'll get out of your hair now. Thank you so much for letting me do your makeup. I'm so glad you like it. Ta-da! 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 That's it then. Looks like she moved on just fine. I still got no idea what the heck she was talking about. I look the same. Most people who don't do makeup much wouldn't notice, but there's a lot of little things she did that add up. That makes me cuter, like you said, right? I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> you said you thought I couldn't get any cuter, but the makeup did manage to do it. But the makeup did manage to do it, remember? I just said that to make Lacey feel better. Just don't look into it too much. Sure, sure, whatever you say, Patty Cake. Ida takes a cloth off the dressing table and scrubs the minimal makeup off from her face. She leave us anything useful? Afraid not, but hey... We helped another poor soul move on. Isn't that reward enough? Honestly, I think I deserve compensation for the almost... For the almost getting all my hair yanked out, but sure. Ooh. Some of these dresses look so shoddy, I'm afraid to touch them. Might tear them just by looking at them too long. <clears throat> How old is this tabloid issue? At least a few years? Either that, they're still really hung up on some really old scandals. Just some hairstyling tools and empty makeup containers. <laughs> Just some potted peonies, it looks like. Actually, I think they're marigolds. You're right, there are marigolds. I may not know my flowers, but I know... <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> hmm. Chlorine. Hmm. What do I do with this pool? Get in the pool. Then get it going for a dip, patty cake. Not if my life depended on it. Get get in the pool. Hmm. Eh, spooky. Alright, let's hope this works. Oh yeah, lockpick. Patricia hands over the lockpick to Ida. Say, Ida, how do you know how to pick locks anyway? Isn't exactly something you learn from doing theater. Er... Uh, hey, I got the door open. Look at that. Hmm. Oh dear. Let me save before something crazy happens. 
Would, would have been nice if this infirmary had any actual first aid supplies, but alas, it seems the director cleaned this place out to use as a set. Pity. Just a bunch of bed linens. Table. Ooh, a book. An old beat-up book of fairy tales. Odd. I never would have taken the director for the sort to read this kind of stuff. Hmm. An old empty teacup. Bath. How sweet. Hmm. 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 Nothing in here? Really? Alright. Well, we know it's here. Ida, a little help? Sure thing. Patricia hands over the lockpick to Ida. Done, and in record time. Ooh, an Ouija board. How lovely. Oh, dead body. Oh, not a dead body. What a sad looking little rag doll. Looks like an old notebook. It's full of loose papers and has property of Josephine Violante written on the cover. It's got smudged ink on several entries and pages fallen out no denying it's a diary. And it has some spare necromancy notes. Lovely. Well, let's read them. Dear diary, I don't think my parents will be coming back for me. Oh, oh, she's into necromancy. Oh, well, that's lovely. That's, that's lovely. <laughs> I don't think my parents will be coming back for me. It's been months since when they said they'd be back. Maybe they suffered an accident. Or maybe they just forgot about me. At least with Uncle, I have slightly more freedom, though only because he's careless and leaves the house unattended more often. Even so, I miss them. I wish I could escape, but where would I go? If my parents don't want me, surely nobody else will take me. And I'd rather die than spend my days at some broken-down orphanage. I can't live like this anymore. I have to do something. I could just kill him. I'm sure no one would miss him. If I've been reading Grandmother's notes right, I should be able to resurrect him as a rather useful puppet. He could easily stand in as a fake guardian until I'm of age and can simply inherit the estate. Once he's dead, I'll be completely alone. I can't wait. Oh dear. Outdated entry? <clears throat> Dearest diary, I haven't heard from Uncle all day. Not that I'm entirely complaining. I've searched the house, and he's nowhere to be found, though his car is still outside, which is rather odd. The only place I haven't checked is the basement, and I've, wa I've been warned this time and time again to stay away by both him and my late grandmother. But I have no other option but to check there. I know what's been going on in the basement. Uncle hasn't been very honest with me. His soirees weren't for fun and dancing. They were cultish meetings. I found my uncle, alone, bleeding and clinging to a stone altar to stay upright. I watched from the doorway as he slowly died there. He deserved it. He took everything from me. He let my parents abandon me. I won't mourn him. I came back to record everything before I began my experiment, and to get my resurrection notes. All the books down there are useless. They're all books on sealing away entities and keeping them at bay. One mentions something about the destruction of the undead. Completely worthless to me. Alas, diary. Our companionship has come to an end. You served me well, but now I feel... Now I need to make some new friends. Oh dear. A step-by-step -step guide on raising the dead, it would appear. There's mention of how to keep the dead fresh and usable, and how to patch up such an abomination should the rot take over. There's also a warning as to the importance of the separation of the spirit and body before one should resurrect a corpse in such a way. Should the soul and body not be properly separated before the ritual, the creation of a semi-corporeal spirit may occur. Ooh. The spirit would be very difficult to dispel with normal cleansing methods. A soul may still stay with the remnants of the body for an, for an hour up to a full day. It is best to cleanse the remains before the remains used beforehand as a precaution. Ooh. Spooky. 
Did I really manage to break that with my fall? For some reason, that doesn't surprise me. Hmm. Hmm. Ada, if you would. Sure thing. Lockpick. After you. Ooh. Pretty. <coughs> <coughs> If I knew I was going to die like this, I would have worn something more extravagant. But now I'm doomed to wander eternally in my fourth best evening gown. What could I possibly have done to deserve this? Oh no, this is all Patricia's fault. If it weren't for her, I would have taken that stupid role, and my career wouldn't have been tarnished so badly. Gosh darn floozy, she's the reason I ended up here. She ruined my career, took everything from me. Oh, she rats! Why? Talking to yourself as usual, Joanna. You! You really just can't let go of the past, can you? It's not my fault you couldn't dig your reputation out of that hole you made. Really, I would have thought you would have moved on by now. Moved on? Move on? I'll move on when you apologize. Me apologize? As if you hadn't slandered me in the t to the tabloids in every interview since that day. As if you hadn't been dead set on destroying my career for the past year. It's not my fault the only way you can get roles is by flirting with the cast and directors. Speaking of, what are you doing here any anyhow? This doesn't suit you, seem your kind of gig. Same as you, I presume. Work is slow, work was slow, and I needed a job to keep the lights on. You, desperate for work, I'm surprised. And why's that? I figured for as long as street corners still existed, you'd be able to find plenty of work. Oh! Oh! You're one to talk. Maybe next time you accuse someone of being a whore, you'll dress a bit more conservatively. Otherwise, you just look like the pot calling the kettle black. What? Well, I'll have you know this ensemble was tailor-made for me and is on the cutting edge of fashion. Cutting edge, I'd agree. If the hem of your dress was cut any higher, you'd be on the edge of committing p public indecency every time you sat down. Oh, just admit you're jealous already, as if I'd be jealous of a floozy like you. You're the one who's jealous. That's why you stole every gosh darn lover I've ever had. I just, you just couldn't stand seeing me happy for even a minute. Stole, right, as if it's my fault your dreadful personality drove them away. Don't try and pin it on me that you couldn't manage to keep a steady relationship. That's all your, eh, that's all your own fault. Hmm. I'm done talking to you, as am I. <laughs> Ladies, please. Am I missing something? I feel like I'm missing something here. We've had a rivalry going on for at least a few years now. She's dead set on trying to ruin my career for no reason, and I refuse to take it lying down. Oh, don't try and play like that's all there is to it. You know precisely what you did. I'm sorry, was I talking to you? Hmm. We should really just go. I'm doubtful there's anything we can do to help her. If she's so dead set on wallowing in self-pity self and being mad about the past, we should just let her be. We still need to talk to her, though. She might have something useful about the director, or have something we need. If you insist, I'll wait by the door, and we can get moving once you're done interrogating her. Oh. <laughs> and just who the heck are you? Er... Detective Ada Bainbridge, ma'am. I've been looking into all the murder and mayhem going on in this here mansion, and I feel like you might just be able to help me. Oh, I don't believe that for a second. Eh? I'm telling the truth. I'm a certified private eye. Really now, a girl your age is running around solving murders. Sorry, but I find that hard to believe. Hey, I'm not that young. I'm the best detective this town's ever seen. Oh, you don't say. Well, why don't you prove it to me then? Since detective work comes so easily to you, I'm sure a smart girl like you would have no problem solving a, sim a matter as simple as, oh, I don't know, solving how I died. Um, y yeah, I could totally find that out. No problem. Give me just one sec. Take your time. An empty wine glass, huh? Looks way too clean to have been used. Hmm. Well, Miss Detective, how goes the investigation? 
All right, I got a few questions for you. Who are you? Joanna Gillespie, professional actress. Beat Patricia Dahl in every single magazine polls, in several magazine polls on popularity. Pleased to meet you. When did you die, exactly? Oh, cutting right to the chase, aren't we? Honestly, I prefer not to talk about it. Still a sore subject for me. What do you know about the director? Not a lot. Said she was fresh out of film school and graduated with high marks. Well, that was a lie. Was looking for a blonde beauty for the main character of, of her first film. Seemed nice enough. That's all. Man, she's really not giving me much to work with. Maybe I have to look elsewhere. Hmm. I wish I could be more help, but dealing with divas can be near impossible. Best of luck. Oh, so, so now you'll talk to me. Don't get used to it. I'm only asking you because I know Patricia is currently unavailable. Now, just tell me what will, what's all happened since I talked to Patricia last so I can update her file. What about mine? Yours isn't relevant anymore. Now, are you going to tell me or not? Fine, fine, I get it. Hmm. Another well, one of them pretty flower paintings the director's got all over the place. Really livens up the joint. Hmm. Nothing useful here. Just some books. A few of them are big and heavy. They look so old they might turn to dust if you handle them too roughly. Hmm. Ida checks underneath the couch and between the cushions. Nothing here. Checks under the chair in between the cushions. There's gotta be something in one of these. Oh, maybe we got something. Nope, just my imagination. I mean, she would have died in this room, right? What's what's with that glass? Hmm. All right. Maybe it's outside. Patricia, are you done? Can we leave now? Hmm. Hmm. A murder weapon. Exactly the kind of evidence we need. Do we really have to take it? Of course we do. We just can't leave evidence of a crime laying around, can we? Okay, but can you carry it? I don't want my fingerprints on it or anything. Ida takes the piano wire and stuffs... Piano wire? Oh, there's piano wire? Hmm. Oh. Piano wire? Hmm. That shiny thing at the bottom of the closet. What's that? Hmm. I didn't notice that before. Looks like a planchette. Might come in handy. What's a planchette? I don't see how a little hunk of wood and glass is gonna help us, but sure, let's take it along. What's a, what's a planchette? Well, let's use it. It's a Ouija board. You're kidding me. Oh my god. Miss Necro Director contacts the dead with a darn kid's toy. That's hilarious. Play with the spirit board? Why, yes! <clears throat> Patricia puts her hands on the planchette and focuses on the board. Can't believe I'm doing this. Are there any spirits here who would like to talk? Don't everybody gather around at once. I'll be done. The planchette is moving. Oh, shoot! What are they saying? It's spelling out something. Mm. Nice. It's got huge tracks of land. Ada, <laughs> stop messing with the board. Ha! You totally fell for it. Come on, doll. I'm a ghost standing right next to someone playing with a spirit board. How can I resist methane with you? Just... never mind. Let's get going. No need to stick around. Aw, oh, can I really not do anything with that? Couldn't hurt to give it another try. Are there any spirits trapped here? Besides Ada. That would like to communicate. The planchet moves slightly. Ida, I swear, if you're moving it again, aim me this time, doll. Oh dear. The planchet hovers over. No. 
then promptly drags itself to goodbye. Oh, well, guess that answers that question. Alright then, excuse me, I'm sorry to bother you. Hmm, what if I mess with that Ouija board one more time? Patricia puts her hands on the planchette and focuses on the board. Are there, with a jolt, the planchette shoots across the room, across the board, back to goodbye. Maybe we should stop fiddling with the creepy spirit board. Just a thought. I see that as a challenge. But first let me save. Hmm, maybe if I just... What part of no and goodbye do you not understand? I knew it. Haven't you done enough damage already? Well then, you're definitely not who I was expecting. Sorry for bothering you, but who are you expecting? It's nothing. It's just been a while since I've seen anyone around here in general. You're trapped here too, aren't you? For the past 30 years or so, yeah, I've lost count honestly. After a while, you stop bothering trying to keep time. Thirty years? Jeez, guess Miss Director's been at this longer than we thought. Is that the grandmother? Director? Wait a minute. Who are you two talking about? And what the heck has she been up to? Has it really been that long? A Miss Josephine Violante? Film director? Shameless murderer? Ring a bell? You have to be kidding me. That stupid brat's a director now? That's what she spent her uncle's money on? So, uh, I'm guessing you two are acquainted. Unfortunately, yeah. I knew her when she was just a kid. She was a spoiled little crap. Couldn't stand not getting her way. When she'd managed to get in here and find that Ouija board, I was excited at first. Maybe she'd help me move on to the afterlife, you know? But of course not. She was just a tiny... Goodness, grandmother. <laughs> uh, female dog grilling me for answers about death. Disrespectful kid didn't, didn't even know how to close a session right. Eventually I figured out just who she was. She's the grandkid of the woman who used to own this house. Oh, the maid! Okay. Angela Violante. Okay, she's the maid. Oh, what happened to the maid? Crazy old bat. How do you two know her? Please don't tell me she's famous now or something. Unfortunately, infamous, eh, infamous would probably be more fitting. She's an awful director. She invited me here just to kill me as far as I can tell. Same here. Yeah. Though she succeeded in killing me as you can no doubt tell. Of course, she had to get me while my back was turned. Otherwise I would have walloped her. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been lovely chatting, but I'm just about to go settle down again. It's going to be a long eternity. Okay, have fun with that. <laughs> well, maybe we can help. You mentioned wanting to move on, right? Maybe we can help. You're joking. I've been stuck here for a couple decades now. What makes you think you can just waltz in here and make everything better? I've got a fairly good track record so far, and it couldn't hurt to try, right? I guess not. All right. Come back and talk to me if you come up with an idea on how to help me move on. Um, any ideas? Can I ask you a few things first? I suppose it'd be okay. How did you die? Well, for some reason you remind me a lot of someone else who asked me that question. But if you need to know, it was Miss Vi- It was Mrs. Violante, the previous owner of this house. She killed me a few months after her husband passed away. I think she might have sacrificed me to try and bring her back her husband. I was knocked out beforehand, so heck if I know what happened after. And then for some reason, she bound my spear to that piece of trash on the table. Maybe she blamed me for his death and wanted me to be punished. Or she was a gosh darn lunatic. Who knows honestly? Any other questions? How do you know the director? She used the Ouija board to talk to me often. When the girl asked me how I died, I only managed to spell out Grandma. Hmm. My spirit was much weaker then. She assumed I meant I was Grandma instead of Grandma murdered me, which is fair. 
Things can easily get lost in translation with a cheap spirit board. The kid had the weirdest obsession with her. Kept asking questions about death and things she read down in the library. She asked a lot about the basement. I told her over and over not to go there. I've seen the things they do to people down there. Heck, I've had a front row seat to that horror show. Catch the mid ritual. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Catch the mid ritual once in a while, looking for a spare mop, and next thing you know, you're part of their cult, whether you whether you wanted to join or not. Cult? Let's change the subject. Any other questions? Maid. My name's Doris. I used to be a maid here. Not much to tell. Come on now. Surely there's more to your story than that. As much as I'd love to sit here and tell you my life story for the next hour, I think I'll pass. Any other questions? Finally, made it back here. Uh, were you killed with piano wire? Well, no sense in keeping me waiting. How do you think I died? Simple. It was... Strangulation with piano wire? Strangulation. You were so busy talking you didn't even notice one of your goons slipped some piano wire around your neck, and just like that, you took your last breath. And just what brought you to that conclusion? I just so happened to find the murder weapon. Oh, that could have been used on any other girl. I thought so too, till I realized something oddly familiar. You wouldn't happen to know if French perfume is real popular amongst dead ladies, would you? Because I couldn't help but notice that it smells just like whatever you must have been wearing before you died. Really now, my perfume rubbed off on that tiny piece of piano wire that much? Well, not to be rude, but you were a little heavy-handed with it when you put it on this morning. I mean, it's nice, but it's a bit overpowering. <laughs> well, did I get it right? You're right. Ooh. What a way to go! Now that I've proved my credentials, how's about we have a little chat? Fine, I'll answer whatever you want to know. Yes, yes, what is it? What kind of movies you do? A little of everything, darling. Primarily romances with the occasional noir. The number of directors I've had tripping over themselves wanting to hire me as some sort of femme fatale or lady criminal is hilarious. I could never get into character, though, so I had to turn them down. I could never be that manipulative. What movies you and Patty work on together? We work together as supporting characters on plenty of occasions, playing showgirls and love interests, you know, the usual pretty girl role. The last time we worked together was also on our first film when we were the main stars. Where we were the main stars, really. Our characters were bitter rivals, but off screen we had gotten very close. Sounds familiar, but I can't quite put my finger on it. What did you say it was called again? It was called Cats and Canaries. <laughs> I remember that movie was god-awful. Um, I've seen that flick. You were great. Thank you, darling. Even with a garbage director and everyone else's terrible performance, I'm glad my tone still managed to show through. Exactly how close were you and Patty? We were very well acquainted at the time. We would practice our scripts together in her dressing room and have drinks, talk about all sorts of things. I didn't speak to her again directly for a long time after filming wrapping, wrapped up. See, she seemed to just move on. Aww. How'd you end up here? My manager quit after a disagreement we had, so I had to find casting calls on my own. After a couple of failed auditions and rejected scripts, I got a call from the director on the phone. She said she had a role perfect for me. What was it? It was about a woman whose husband cheats on her, and then she makes it her mission to frame him for murder and ruin his life. How nice. It was quite the comedy. She said the script had already been approved, so the board wouldn't get in the way. Though, now that I think about it, there's no way the script was up to code. Why are you so mad at her? I, I'd rather not get into it. Why don't you go ask Patricia? I'm sure she'd be happy to recount how she ruined my life. Hey, uh, Patricia. Can I ask you something? I guess it couldn't hurt. What is it? What did you do to pee her off anyway? I mean, you said you'd had a feud going for a while now, but where'd it start? 
Why don't you just ask her? She told me to come ask you. Fine, here's the whole story. We were co-stars on a movie a few years back. It bombed so hard at the box office that the company we worked for went belly up. Since then, she's sworn that I sabotaged the film somehow to try and destroy her career, so she's been trying to ruin mine. The whole love of stealing was just an unlucky coincidence, though. My manager would set me up with one of her exes for a film or a tabloid if would would sit there. My manager would set me up with one of her exes for a film or a tabloid would snap a photo. And by that time, I was so mad I just went along with it. I just went along with all of it to hurt her. I thought we had left on good terms after filmed rap, filming wrapped. We'd gotten along so well during it, and then suddenly I was seeing her bad mouthing me to tabloids among other things. And I wasn't going to go down without a fight, so I called her out on it. Then she started trying to steal rolls out from under me, and it just kept going until there was all an all-out feud. <laughs> Directors and co-workers picked sides. Things got messy for a while. It calmed back down after the tabloids got bored, but she never did give up on it. Sometimes I wonder if she really enjoyed being around me. If she was just waiting until filming rap to start a fight and use it to get attention. Sorry, I probably said too much. Huh, well, thanks for the info. Alright. Well, Patty said she didn't know what she did to pee you off in the first place. Said that after filming, you were mad about the movie flopping and blamed her. She... Oh, it just... It'd be just like that harpy to leave out anything that'd make her look bad. You want to know the truth? What? I don't know if you caught on earlier, but in case you're dense, me and Patricia were in a relationship during filming. Or at least, I thought we were. I mean, if not, then what were we? But it doesn't matter now, because guess what happened as soon as filming wrapped up? I see that floozy hanging off with some new guy's arm, laughing and talking like they'd known each other for years. Didn't even try to recur return any of my calls. She acted like she didn't even know me. Nice way of letting me know our time together didn't mean anything to you. Jeez. Yeah, I can see why you're mad now. But really, it's funny. She goes around saying I went and stabbed her in the back when she's the one who left me hung out to dry. All those evenings together, everything we shared, what a waste. Excuse me a sec, I gotta go ask Pat a few questions. Don't let me stop you. No, oh, just getting in the between these two ladies. Why the heck didn't you tell me she was your ex? What the... What are you yelling about? You went and broke Joanna's heart. She told me everything. Why didn't you tell me it was this complicated? It's no wonder she went all revenge crazy. Hold on, hold on. Let me get this straight. Joanna told you we were lovers? And I cheated on something and that's why she's mad? Yeah, that's about it. Oh, of course she'd cook up a lie like that for sympathy points. We had a fling during filming, but that was all. A short backstage romance. It wasn't a real relationship. I thought she understood that. Well, obviously she thought it was something more, and you need to apologize. For what, a misunderstanding? I doubt she'd even hear me out. You gotta try at least, Pat. <laughs> I read that completely backwards. I'm not going to apologize for things I never even did. We were never together, and I wasn't even dating the man she says I cheated with. I don't even like men that way. You still broke her heart, and you still tried to ruin her career. As retaliation for what she did to me trying to ruin my reputation. Still, still don't excuse you moving on along without even a proper goodbye and never speaking to her again. You gotta own up to what you did, Pat. Oh, come on, Ada. Don't be like that. Heartbreak happens all the time in Hollywood. She should have known what she was getting into. How was I supposed to know she thought it was more than... than it was? And I only moved on quickly because my manager had set me up with him to try and repair my image. You understand, don't you? I didn't mean to hurt her. It just kind of happened. Ada... Mm. Ida, cut it out. Don't make me haunt your chest, lady. Fine, fine.
fine, I'll apologize. Just stop staring at me like that, will ya? Glad we come to an agreement. <clears throat> Patty's got something she wants to say to ya. That's so. Patricia. Joanna. <sighs> I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry I misunderstood our relationship and got your feelings hurt. I... Oh no. And I guess for dragging your name through the mud. But really, you should have expected it after you... After I... What? <laughs> Here we go. You deserved it after what you put me through. Do you have any idea how much of a PR nightmare your little tell-alls were? Oh, that's rich coming from you, as if pretending I was nobody wasn't enough. You had to go and try and make sure I never worked again. Okay, ladies, let's just calm down, and I should have never trusted you to begin with. You were always a selfish biscuit when we worked together, and I should have seen it coming. Oh, that's a laugh. I let you borrow my makeup and drink my champagne, and a knife in my back is my thanks. Oh, right, excuse me for not being great for your endless generosity after you threw me away like trash. My mistake. Listen, we gotta get... You know the reason the movie failed was because of your... <laughs> because of your wooden acting. Oh, spare me, as if your performance was anything to write home about. At least I know how to work with a bad script. But why should I expect better from an airheaded narcissist like you? Airheaded, you're one to talk. You. That's enough! 